guys, and welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guide. Today, Jinro the Stork, probably the most obscure legendary champion. Half of you may not have even realized that this dude existed, but... Our goal here is to review every champion. We gotta get to all of them eventually here. I have, did wanna start out, if you don't care about my little ad here, it is my first channel sponsor. And if you wanna support me in this project that we're doing here on the channel, it, I'd appreciate it if you stayed tuned for 20 seconds uh, to hear about it. If not, I understand, feel free to fast forward. We're gonna do the, the quick ad on Aura. We're gonna do the champion lore, and then we're gonna get into who this champion is in the build. So just to kind of outline what to be expecting in today's video. So what is Aura? It's a VPN. It's uh, it's financial security. It's, it tracks your credit. It does everything. Everything that you could want to secure yourself on the internet is available in Aura. It's a 14-day free trial when you use my QR code, the link at the top of this description or the pinned comment in today's video. And just in the first, like, hour of using Aura, I found a critical alert, my email and my, actually my address, I was totally doxxed out of Coin Tracker, an old crypto thing I used to use, right? And then it took, it removed me from 24 data broker uh, services. And then I have the VPN now for the first time ever, which is really, really cool. There's a bunch of other services here, guys. I'm not going to take too much of your time, but thank you to Aura and thank you to those of you who go ahead and give it a try. Again, it's a free cancellation after 14 or be, before the 14 days. It is pretty easy to do so. So, you know, you have nothing to lose to try it out, especially if, like me, you were putting this kind of stuff off. Again, uh, would appreciate it if you guys would go ahead and consider using my link. It helps support me and the channel here. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the lore. All right, guys, Genro the Stork, here is the lore for this champion. For those of you who do not know, on this channel, on these guides, we're approaching 100 guides on this channel. Uh, we give the lore on every champion that has it, usually 99% of the time at the end of the video. If lore is not your thing, feel free to fast forward. I will have timestamps as well. We'll have the ad, we'll have the lore, so you can skip right to the build if that's all you care about in today's video. But I figured we'd switch things up and do it at the beginning. So here we go. It is Genro the Stork. For generations, honor-bound warrior clans watch over the lands of Yakai and shepherded its people in their quest to create a perfect society of order and discipline. They were the hereditary rulers of the kingdom and its greatest protectors against threats both within and without. Though stern and unforgiving, these warriors were nonetheless ready to lay down their lives for their homeland without hesitation. But evil will always find purchase in mortal hearts. What a quote. When the armies of Siroth invaded, they did not do so unprepared. Cunning agents had worked in secret to create vile cults and subvert the noble Yakai. Many clans, many clans turned on their own brethren when the dark hour arrived and the chaos of war engulfed the Dawnlands. Ultimately, it was the strategy that allowed the demon spawn to prevail. Yet, there were some who resisted at all odds. Jinro, called the Stork for his particular fighting style, not his nose, uh, was a lord of great renown. In his domain encompassed the western borderlands. He was among the first to face the invaders, holding firm, surrounded, though he was on all sides by demon and wretched traitors. There was no hope of a lasting victory, yet the path of a true warrior remained clear. A glorious death was prepare, uh, preferable to surrender. Ginro gathered what loyal soldiers remained and marched forth to confront the hordes of Siroth. The two forces clashed amid a verdant uh, Susa hills in the bloody battle that would last a week with nary a moment of respite. First, Jinro and his warriors faced the treacherous Yakai lords who had turned their backs on the kingdom and now sought the favor of the Dark Lord. Their minions numbered in the thousands, but Ginro outmatched the army of uh, the enemy generals in the art of war, and he knew he was fighting for a righteous cause. His host repelled the traitors' onslaughts and pushed them back, while Jinro himself sought to end as many of the unworthy curs as he could ere his own life was cut short. Many fell to his spear as the grim samurai advanced through the carnage, his resolve unbroken no matter how many losses and wounds he had to endure. Not even when demon spawn legions entered the fray did Jinro the Stork waver. Inspired by their general's example, the survivors rallied to his side for one final desperate push. The demons were stopped in their track, then forced to give ground besides the fury of the Yakai. Alas, there was nothing Jinro's grave, uh, excuse me, brave warriors could do when one of their own had to face ten of the foe. All that remained was to sell their lives as dearly as possible 
And that is what they did. Soon, Jinro remained alone, bleeding and surrounded by demon corpses. Yet, just as a blade was about to pierce his throat, a binding flash illuminated the battlefield, sending the demons reeling in primal terror. And when the last of the light faded, they saw that Jinro, there was no sign. A single white feather remained to remind Siroth Spawn of a defiant samurai who refused to bow and fought to the last. There we go, guys. There's Jinro, the stork lore. Let's jump into the guide. You know what? I was laying in bed. This is how pathetic my life is. That I was laying in bed, and what was I thinking about? Raid freaking Shadow Legends. <laughs> We're not on the stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. I was thinking, what video am I going to record tomorrow? What am I going to do? And I got to think to myself, what is the most difficult to get champion in this game? And for me, it kind of came down to a three-way tie, you know? So I wanted to run the question by you guys, and then we'll kind of uh, uh, change the topic of the conversation to this particular champion who I was so freaking wrong about. So wrong. And I think everybody else who has this champion so far is probably wrong as well. Uh, but anyway, you guys can be the judge of that. But the champions I came up with, the three most difficult champions to get in the game are Lydia the Death Siren because... I know, you know, they added a bunch to this game, uh, Artifact Ascension and Blessings and everything, but it's still freaking hard to three-star every Faction Warriors. You need to invest in a lot of champions to do so. So I think that Lydia is still one of the most difficult to get champions in the game. The other one I'm going to say is... Uh, the one that I am so embarrassed not to have, and it's Ramen 2. Ramen 2 Drake's Blood, the, the champion that you get for completing not just the Arbiter missions, but I guess now the, the Ramen 2 missions, the missions in Raid Shadow Legends. Takes a lot of work, a lot of grinding, but eventually you'll get there. And I swear, I'm not a big resolution dude, but here in 2023, I'm going to get my hand on Ramen 2 Drake's Blood just to show you how pathetic it was. I've mentioned this on the channel before, and you guys have shamed me so much in the comments for this. <laughs> Please, be easy on me. I'm being honest with you guys. Confession time. On the missions, dude, I stopped at Fuse Justicar, right? So I don't even... So I, I pulled... The reason I stopped is because I pulled Arbiter, right? So I thought to myself, well, I guess I'm done. I'm never gonna... I don't care about Fusing Justicar, but I don't even have all the champ... And, well, wait, wait. I guess I do have all the champions. I, maybe I'll fuse just a card. Not right now, but you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, guys. Anyway, that's champion number two. But champion number three to me, I decided it is. And you guys can tell me if you agree or disagree. And we're going to see this champion spotlight here on the channel. If you go to the hard track on Doom Tower, right? And I've been pretty vigilant. I don't do my missions, but apparently I do do I do do my Doom Tower. I sidestep on the doo doo thing, by the way. Hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I do do my Doom Tower uh, battles every single day, right? So I, I I am keeping up with this both on the on the normal and the hard track, and I have all the champions. So that means that I have Jinro the Stork. Now Jinro the Stork here is the last champion that you get from Doom Tower Hard Track. So if you're doing all your battles, it will take you, I don't know, a couple years and you can get your hands on Jinro the Stork. So Jinro the Stork being the last champion that you get and the last champion that I guess we're ever going to get. They said they have no intent, uh, no intents on adding in more champions to the Doom Tower track. They're just going to add Forge material and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of that or if I don't care. I guess I'm on the fence. I can see both sides of the argument. Either way, I got him now. I got him, right? So... I looked at this champion and I thought to myself, and I complained, boy did I complain, I'm eating some massive crow here, guys. This is, what you, this is what you're supposed to do. If you're wrong about something in life, you change your opinion and you own it, you know? What? Mr. General, he's a void legendary. He's the dude with the big schnoz, you know? Look at that thing. Wow, man. Uh, he looks so badass. Like, I think this the aesthetics on this champion are really, really cool looking. I, I really love the aesthetic. He is, again, a void legendary. And my man, I released a video a few days ago on uh, Mr. Fortis. I actually really think he was a, it was a fun video to do. Some of you guys enjoyed it too. The octopus man. I don't know. He's kind of a squid. It's a squid, not an octopus. Are there eight legs there? Two, three, four. Either way, Fortis, my man, uh, was really bad in terms of his reviews, right? They're, they're really bad. I kind of liked him. He was fun. He's not OP. He's not even average. But he was fun. Still could use a buff. But I, I, I saw that I am wrong here. Jinro the Stork is actually the lowest reviewed champ legendary in the game by a mile. Even worse than Jingwan. Okay? So what does this dude do? And I have to tell you, I'm just going to tell you straight up right now, guys. 
he's now, maybe I'm just, maybe it's one of those things. You go see a movie and you have really crappy expectations for it. And you're like, wow, that wasn't too bad. That was a good movie. So maybe that's, that's what I'm doing right now. But I, I love this dude. <laughs> and I've complained so many times like, Plarium, buff the, the Doom Tower champions. They're, they're trash. And they really are, you know, because the problem is by the time you get these champions, for the most part, look at these names. I mean, Thea needs a buff to me. Euros is great. Gomlock is meh. Varl is meh. Ba is okay. Pretty good. Uh, but Vassal the Seal is meh. Chromax, meh. Gronjar is awful. And then Jinro the Stork. Really quickly, just because we're all over the place in today's video, so let's continue that trend here. Gronjar. I'm going to do a video coming up in the next week of all the worst champions, the worst legendaries, all in a team together, or the most obscure legendaries, maybe. Because this guy really sucks, too, right? as you guys can see. Uh, but more on that another day. So what does Jinro do that I thought he was so bad, right? So on his A1 attacks one enemy, 60% chance of increasing the cooldown of one of the target skills by two turns at random. On the A2, Befuddle, on a three-turn cooldown, places, attacks one enemy, plays a stun for two turns, ignore block debuffs, and block damage. On the A3, counterattack on this champion, Increase defense on this champion. On the A, on the passive, Laughing Gull, passive effect. Increase this champion's defense each time they counterattack. Defense resets at the time this champion gets a turn, okay? Uh, when attacking, converts the champion's resistance into additional accuracy. Active effect. At the end of this champion's turn, places a provoke debuff for one turn on all enemies under increased attack buffs. So, you know, in case you're a new player, passive effects are always active, meaning that. Every time he attacks, he's going to convert his resistance into ac extra accuracy. The active effect is on the cooldown of four turns. So he's only placing that provoke uh, one turn, then it goes on cooldown, okay? So there he is. Resist in all battles by 80. So that's an extra 80 accuracy as well. It's kind of like Mithrala, where we get that extra... It's kind of the opposite, right? We get that extra accuracy or that extra resistance from the accuracy. This time, we get the extra accuracy from the resistance. And I think that's incredibly powerful. Now... Let's take one more look quickly at this champion because I know that I realize 99.99% .99 of people don't even have him. So I want this video to be, you know, rather quick. <laughs> so emotional damage. He's a defense-based champion. Let's 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 really think about this though. And this is a problem that I fall prey to. I feel like a lot of players fall prey to. You can learn from this. Sometimes, if, especially if you don't have a champion, if you just glance at their kit, you can just be like, dude, trash, trash champion. But Sometimes, on second glance, you're like, wait a second here. This guy could be a monster. Attacks one enemy, 60% chance of increasing the cooldown of one of the skills by two turns at random. So really good A1, considering he's placing a counterattack for three turns on himself, okay? Uh, and increased defense. He's bringing increased defense on a defense-based champion. We don't have him built out for damage, but, you know, that will also increase his damage off of that A3 ability. So, really cool cooldown reduction on the A1. Look at this befuddle ability, guys. Placing a stun for not one, but two turns on a three-turn cooldown. And we're ignoring block debuffs. Nothing like that in the game. You have a Duchess there with every buff known to man except for stone skin, right? Uh, and immunity, I guess, right? Uh, block, uh, well, actually, it, no, it doesn't matter. Immunity is not going to matter. My bad. I, I strike that from the record. Uh, block debuffs, right? So we do not care, right? It doesn't matter. We're going to stun them no matter what. So a stun for two turns that ignores block debuffs, not to mention in the arena, I I'm looking at this champion as an arena specialist. At the end of this turn, plays a provoke on everybody with increased attack. I mean, if we're going to get to speed team, we're going to provoke everybody at the end of the turn anyway, which is really cool on the first turn. And that should be enough to hopefully achieve victory. Either way, it's a nice to have. And then that converting resistance into accuracy allows you to build this champion to where he's a behemoth of a resist monster. And that will convert into accuracy and will always be landing this stun and controlling vis-a-vis -vis the A1. I have to say, guys, is he the best legendary in the game? No. Is he super niche to the arena, at least in my opinion? Yes. By the way, massive shout out to Bront CH. He just went through surgery. Much love, brother. I'm glad that you're doing well in recovering at home. But let me show you this guy, right? Oh, let me show you how I have him built real quick. I think that he's... I, be, I was running him at first as kind of like, okay, we can make a funny video about how bad this guy sucks, right? And then I start... The more I ran him, I just like easily pushed to plat. I easily pushed to top 100. Granted, it's a Friday at the time. It's a Saturday at the time of this recording. So I still have a whole day till the end. It's not like the end of plat or anything like that. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to like brag about it. But 
I pushed the top 20. I pushed the top 10 in the world with Ginro Jinro the Stork. You know what I'm saying? Because he's a really cool champion. He really is. And I was so wrong. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm really Ian Crow. I don't have him booked here, guys. Because I'm saving my books for the clan versus clan like a good boy. So the stun's actually going to be on a four-turn cooldown. This is going to be on a freaking seven-turn cooldown. And I'm still using him. I'm still using him, right? And this is only going to be a 50, not a 60% not a chance. I do have him in a six-piece stone skin. I didn't have him as slow as I normally build champions for the arena in stone skin at 166. Because I would like him to use that stun, right, on that A2. So come back around to more turns. But we also want that stone skin to stay on this champion as long as humanly possible. So try to thread the needle at 166. 579 resistance. Of course, we can get higher than that, but it's his resistance is going to be, or his accuracy, excuse me, is going to be five, six, seven, seven seventy ish. You know, that's pretty dang high, seven seventy on the accuracy because you add that up, and then forty seven hundred on the defense, not too bad. Fifty two hundred on the HP. I do have HP percentage on the gauntlets. I have resistance, obviously, on the chest. I have defense percentage on the boots. And I have resistance, obviously, again, on the banner on this champion. We have defense and more defense. And we're looking for defense wherever we can find it on the gear on this champion. So that's how I have them done. Masteries, I went right down to Unshakable. Picked up another 50 resist there. Uh, also went down the offense tree. I could have went the uh, support tree. Probably should have. But either way, let's go ahead and give them a quick try in the arena, guys. And you'll see what I'm talking about. We're here in plat, but we probably jumped down fell down quite a bit in the last hour or so uh, preparing for this video so uh let's go ahead and see what we can do here i'm just gonna start against the first team that we have and this is the team that i have assembled it's pretty op we have siffy we have marichka we have harmina as our dps and we have jinro the stork i'm just gonna leave it on auto at first and i have to tell you man i haven't even taken this team off auto <laughs> i'm just it's really cool, by the way, to see Skull Lord uh, Vargal in Plat. Not a champion that you run into every day. Uh, but there he goes with a two-turn stun. Granted, of course, he targets Ursiga, which I guess is fine. They don't have a reviver on this team, so that's cool. Uh, but you saw, you know, easily landing that two-turn stun on Ursiga. What I want to do, actually, is going to be a super easy battle here. Taking them all down, easy, right? But... After this team, I actually want to go seek out a bunch of like Duchess teams, uh, Siffy teams, these teams that have block debuffs because it's so fun and weird. It takes a little bit to get used to seeing this champion land stuns when they have block debuffs. It's like counterintuitive. You're like, wait a second, I can I can use this. I, can, I, I are you sure this is gonna work? Oh, uh, you fellas have nothing to worry about. <laughs> I'm a professional. And it does. So I have to say, man, I've learned a, a, a valuable lesson in today's uh, video, right? And that is stop judging a book by its cover, <laughs> you know? Try to look a little bit deeper at what kind of value a champion might bring to the table. So let's go ahead and attack here, even though it's a bad affinity matchup. We still almost kill her. Uh, let's go ahead and now you can see here... Block debuffs, block debuffs, block debuffs. The bummer is stone skin, stone skin, stone skin. So you actually can't see much. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the A3. So we have that. You know what? You know what, guys? I'm definitely, I definitely screwed up by not having lasting gifts on this champion as well. Uh, I think lasting gifts is gonna. I'm actually gonna go auto while I talk to you guys. Lasting gifts is gonna be a no-brainer on this champ. Okay. Oh, nice job, nice job. Lasting gifts is gonna be a no-brainer because I want that counterattack to be extended. You know. All right, so we are almost up, but still a bunch of stone skin. I'm just going to come in here and kill uh, Mr. Uh, Cupidus. So stone skin, stone skin, not much we can do here. I just wanted to show you. I, I want to show you landing a stun on block debuffs. It's not that hard. I did it 150 times on my way up here. Maybe so, sir, but not today. So let's go ahead and cleanse. Let's go ahead and buff. And then let's uh, let's just let's just kill Venus or close to. Ah uh, man, I can't go after my man here. I can't go after my man. Let's do this. Let's wait till he goes. No peril. Any of you guys been in that situation where you go against more to Macab and like you think you've got it one just like this, and he just all of a sudden just rattles off four perils in a row? Okay, luckily he doesn't kill her because she has the, that amazing passive. Uh, enemy ignore defense effects are decreased by 50%, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, he does, okay. You betrayed me. It's my show, bitch! 
that didn't work out very well. Let's do another one. Let's go against a, okay. This is a fun team again, another Venus Cupidus team. No doubt they have some sort of stone skin going on, but they have Cardial. He has blocked debuffs. He also has a cleanse, something to think about. I'll tell you what, making that uh, stun protected, a protected debuff stun, that would be pretty crazy. If you wanna, if you're looking to buff this champion at any time. Um, I really also wish that there was, I said this before, nothing new, but I really wish that, okay, let's see, let's see. So we have a protected block, uh, stone skin. Okay, we're, let's go ahead and stun him. Cardio, boom, two turn stun with block debuffs. You love to see it, don't you guys? Isn't that cool? That is so powerful, man. You take him out of the game for two turns. Are you kidding me? I gotta tell you guys. Okay, back to my point, I'll try to make. Sorry, 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 I'm all over the place today. As, is, as with every day in this channel, right? But I really wish they would just give you in Doom Tower uh, the ability to get like Doom Tower fragments that you can use on any champion if you're choosing. Because let's be honest, even looking here at the, the normal track, right? The Doom Tower normal, it's like these champions suck. For the, okay, some of them aren't that bad. But for the most part, I guess my main point is Archmage Helmet and Dark Kale, who you get in the beginning, are better than almost every other champion or are better than every other champion. So it's not like they're already ranked based on how good they are, they're not. So why not allow us to just farm the fragments like Doom Tower Champion fragments and then there's a little Doom Tower Champion shop where you can just buy whoever the heck you want to, you know? Cause I would love this champion way more than having, you know, any one of, <laughs> maybe Eurost I would, I would take. And this is crazy to say, but Jinro the Stork? I think I'd rather have him than everybody on here. Even Basatha, who I love, he has a, a, an AoE stun on a three turn cooldown, uh, and he has a really cool passive. But the thing is, is I think that, uh, that Lydia, who we mentioned at the beginning of this video, is actually a little bit better and very, not similar, but her passive is way better. Instead, because like uh, 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 Basatha's passive is when an enemy is revived, an unre irresistible stun goes on that enemy, right? Uh, but the cool thing is, is uh, Lydia, not only is she blocking the revive instead of stunning, but she's also reviving everybody and she ignores block revival. So by the time that you get Basatha, it's like you already have Lydia. So, you know, and you don't need like a dungeon stun CC champion by that time because it's going to take you a year plus to get that champion. We finished this team off and honestly, it took us kind of a while. But still, 2 minutes and 30 seconds against this tanky of a squad isn't that bad. Let's go ahead and do one more battle. I'm really curious on your take on this uh, this champion, guys. Let's go against this squad because, again, I know Duchess has the block debuff. So does Pytheon. So let's go ahead and go against both of them. And we're not going to care. And uh, keep in mind, again, my man is unbooked here. Am I crazy in saying that this could be, like, one of my best teams on defense? Plus, imagine trotting this dude out in live arena, live PvP. No one's gonna even know what the hell he does. They're gonna be like, who's this? Who's who's this champion, <laughs> you know? Cause yeah, uh, cause who does, who, what idiots other than me do their Doom Tower battles every single day? Maybe there's a couple of you out there. Emotional death. So we are dealing with stone skin. So we're just gonna A1 into uh, Duchess here. And you know what? No, I'm, I'm gonna go A3 again. Counter attack, increase defense. Sure, let's do it. So we're going to counterattack here, increase cooldown. Look at that control. We haven't even really talked enough about his skills here in these arena battles. I'm just kind of blabbing my, my head off to you guys. But man, like that counterattack, so valuable, right? So valuable. All right, here we go. So we already have the provoke, thanks to Harima. Don't call me Harmina. And then we're going to come in here and I'm, I'm pissed off that they destroyed my girl. So I'm going to two turn stun. Boom, two turn stun locked down, even with the block debuffs. You love to see it. They killed Siffy though. That's not cool, man. That's not cool at all. All right, let's see what we can do here. Good news is I don't think, I still think we're gonna win this one. We'll see though, we'll see. Harmina, ah, Harima is so good, dude. She is, I'm, I'm so happy I pulled this champion. She's an absolute monster. With that passive, it's helping to keep the team alive, right? Uh, and that damage. She's insane. She's got to be my favorite. I want to make sure I mean this. Yeah, she's my favorite go second nuker. 
slash control. She's bringing provoke slash support because of that passive uh, in the game right now. Anyway, this could take a while because what's going to happen here is they're eventually going to go ahead. Hopefully, I can kill some of these revivers, but they're eventually going to kill my team. But then Marichka is going to activate her passive and she's going to revive everybody. But it's nice to have Jinro in there, uh, you know, increasing the cooldown all the time, right? Essentially. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm not going to make you sit here and wait me for wait and watch me, excuse me, for another five minutes. But another two turns done. You'll love to see it. Uh, I am going to come back at the end of this battle and we'll let you know which way it went. All right, guys, there it goes. Took us a while, but we got the job done. So what do you think, guys? What do you think of this champion? I hope that you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did because uh, Jinro the Stork is a guy that I gave a lot of crap to and he's really one of, again, arguably, who would you put in the conversation of the hardest to get champions out there? Obviously, champions that you can't get, like Ninja or whatever, would be disqualified. And I don't think personally that Mithrala is the hardest to get because it's just a matter of, you know, getting, you know, what? You could probably get her. Do you have Mithrala Lightbane? Let me, let me end the video there. Guys. Let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. And as always, take care, guys.